I'm Alita Brill and I'm a writer. I've been a writer virtually my entire adult life. This was the book I swore I would never write. Being chronically ill is living on another planet. I've lost huge chunks of my life. In lupus alone, it's nine to one women. This is not the life I would have chosen, but at the end of the day, it hasn't been all bad. I'm Dr. Michael Lockson. I'm a rheumatologist. Uh, I work at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. We both began almost the exact same way, that she said this wasn't the life she chose, and in fact, I said that I hadn't planned to be a, a rheumatologist. Part of this book is written for the parents of girls and young women who are awakening to the life that I've lived. I think the hardest thing is when I talk to someone right at the beginning of an illness, I project where this person is going to be in 10 years and 20 years and so on. My dreams for this book, first for me, are for young women and women my age to not be defined by the disease. Most people encountering illness, certainly the way you see it on television, certainly the way the insurance companies look at it, think of it as event, normality, event. We don't do that on day one. There's a dialogue that has to happen. The person is much more important than the illness. I had a job that I liked very much, and eventually I was um, invited to leave. In a sense, I don't blame them. One of the single biggest issues is pain. And how do you keep a smile on your face and keep functioning when you hurt all over and can barely move? People with these illnesses can't shake hands because it hurts a great deal. My marriage that I write about, I believe broke up because I was a lunatic. People get married for better or worse unless you have a chronic illness, in which case it's only for better. And the very last letter my husband ever wrote me, he said, Husbands are supposed to help, they're supposed to take care, and they're supposed to heal. And I can't, and I'm just all healed out with you. Most uh, relationships break apart. Everything that you think of as a normal life is difficult to maintain. The thing I remember is he came out to get me. He didn't send someone else. He came out. He was young, we were young. And I thought, oh, he's young. You know, he's like a brother. I still think it's important. Uh, that we meet as people, not as supplicant and savior. I want doctors to read this book too, and I want them to say, wait a minute, maybe I need to listen to people's stories. I am humbled by my disease. I think the enemy of doctor-patient relationship is arrogance. The patient that I find most difficult to deal with is that patient who needs an answer needs a yes or no. I'm actually so good about not doing that that sometimes he gets mad at me because I let things go mm -hmm. too far. I'm too polite mm -hmm. sometimes. I go, I dance at the river's edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs>